umpire, Tim McClellan, with the bat in his hand. Now they're going to measure it across home plate. <laughs> I, I've never, I've never seen this. I never have either. I don't know what, I don't know what they're measuring. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at. restrained from hitting plate umpire Tim McClellan. And the Yankees have won the ball game four to three. Red is called out for using an illegal bat. Or with the illegal substance on the bat. Like I said, I have seen this before, Frank, and uh, Gaylord Perry just took the bat away from the whole plate umpire Jim McClellan. He's going to take the bat. They're going to take it so they cannot take it into the American League office. We've, we've, we've been running that uh, uh, intro about 50,000 times here at the studio. Mr. Baseball, he, he, he's at the uh, Hash Slinger of the Year uh, contest. Although you are, you're technically a bartender, aren't you, Mr. Baseball? Yes, I am. Yes, and from, I guess, a, the only town in America that is named after one of the honeymooners Norton, Massachusetts, is Peter Stella. How are you, Mr. Stella? Uh -huh. Norton. You're from, aren't you from? Norton. Yes. Uh, for some reason, around the around the time that Hodgepodge Lodge, uh, Massachusetts, changed its name to Norton, Massachusetts, to win the contest uh, that Jackie Gleason. I think some uh, burg in New Mexico changed its name to Truth or Consequences. It was uh, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Yeah, is an actual place, and so is Norton, Massachusetts. Uh, I am nowhere near Norton, Massachusetts, and uh, I'm not sure if I've ever been there. Uh, but it's uh, that it's interesting. It, it was named after a honeymoonist. Uh, the character because there's another small town in Massachusetts, uh, Trixie, which oh. I think was also uh, named after a honeymooners character. And I used to live near Dobbs Ferry, and then there was there was the burg of Art Carney near near Sleepy Hollow. Uh, total total coincidence. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, was Mr. Baseball was Jackie the great uh, the great one? Uh, Jackie Gleason, a baseball fan. I don't know if he was a baseball fan, but I was a huge fan of his. I loved the Honeymooners. But, I loved his show. Je uh, he never did any skits uh, featuring baseball? I can't think of any, no. Do you notice how we're doing this, folks, to avoid the fact that one week after, after the Yankees are still a half game in first place? I was telling Peter, I was so desperate, I, you know, decided to give it all up and slipped off of my pool noodle, but I failed the drum because I forgot it was in my niece's uh, pool, which is only about uh, 18 inches deep. So here, here I am, I dried out well, in both ways. And of course, you're going you're gonna to float anyway because you're naturally buoyant. Oh, yes. Uh, Al Campanis, I, I actually, uh, you know, vouches for it. Hey, what about... I, I didn't know that you were that worried. <laughs> what about them Yankees? You know, 31 and 13. The Red Sox, our beloved Le Bar Rouge on the west side, which means Red, so Red Stockings, are 32 and 15. The only two teams in the American League East 
to be above 500. Any discussion about this? I know Mr. Baseball's dying to discuss it. <laughs> Why well, are they doing so well? Well, go ahead, Mr. Baseball. I will let you chime in. No, it's uh, bringing up Taurus was a shot in the arm for the Yankees. He's just playing super baseball. Walker, uh, for some reason, has started to hit, and he can play first or third, and probably a couple of other infield. Do you want to explain the, who Gla uh, Glaber, how do you pronounce his name? Glaber Torres is? Yes. Yeah. He, uh, he had two last night. No, would you explain? Uh, he, he had two home runs last night? Yeah. Well, Yankees hit five. Judge hit one. Walker hit one. Now, Mr. Baseball, and, well, I've often told you, uh, don't assume that everybody that's watching knows who Taurus is. Who is Glaber Taurus? And uh, how, why was it critical that they finally brought him up? Well, first of all, the third baseman, I can't think of his name that got hurt. He was just a filler, and he was mediocre at best. And uh, Taurus was him up. They, got him in, they got him in the uh, Cubs trade a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, he was so, hitting 366. Uh, not, they not only got they not only got back the uh, relief pitcher, but they got Torres in the deal, and uh, yeah, he's doing well. And well, Sheffield is be, was, will be coming up. He's a pitcher. That was in the deal. Was that the Aroldis Chapman deal? Yes. Yes, it was. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the, so uh, he's taking, what's his name's place? Who was, who was the third? Was that Aquino? It was, well, Andrew Hart no, the last the second couple of weeks or so. But I think they're going to platoon him. Well, Torres can also play second. Oh, yeah, Torres is playing second. Right. That's, that's what he's playing. Walker played third last night. Yeah, because Torres played thir more, more games at third. He was just briefly up in triple A. Where he hit 366, but he was splitting time between uh, the Keystone Sack and, as Peter Stella uh, uh, is famous for his article, Keystone Sackers need more respect. No, deserve more respect. Isn't that it, Peter? That was, yeah, it, you know. And the hot corner. I'll tell you, you know, shortstop, shortstop, shortstop. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, hey, you know, there's uh, somebody on the other side of that bag that plays a key role in that infield. You know, it's interesting, in the old days, in the 20s, 30s, second baseman was where you had your uh, your real stud as a hitter. Uh, but, you know, things change. Shortstop was there for skills, which when we were kids, yeah. You know, you were lucky if you had a shortstop that could hit well, or yeah, steal bases. It used to be like if, uh, if the guy, if the shortstop and second baseman were like good defenders, you know, they would carry you if you hit 240. And, you know, that's certainly, you know, like everything else in the game evolved, you know. And uh, But even even with that, second baseman sort of, like, kind of trailed the field there, uh, yeah. you know, until people like, uh, you know, Bobby Gritch uh, came along and, uh, you know, oh, yeah. it definitely became more of an offensive Offense. position uh, at that point, you know. Yeah, and then you had, of course, you know, like with the Orioles, you had Belanger. He had eight gold gloves and hit below the Mendoza line. He probably they would have named it after him, except he was, he couldn't even hit as much as Mendoza. But then you get Cal yeah. Ripken. Cal Ripken redefines a modern shortstop. You know, a six foot four, a slugger. Well, a funny story about Belanger was that, uh, you know, uh, I, I think it was like during during that time, it was like one, the know, one team, had, I, had the, I think it was the White Sox, had a picture of Mark Belanger up in their bullpen. And they were like, somebody asked him, what is the picture of Mark Belanger doing here? And he said, he's the only guy we've gotten out all year. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baseball, uh... Do you think the Yankees are going to stay in first place? Yes, I do. I pick, I predicted that before the season started. Uh, and by the way, we're getting Bird back this week. So watch out. Murderer's Robe will be intact. 
How many home runs have they hit hey, well, so far? Well, Dustin Pedroia back. The Yankees are on a pace and, uh, right now to break the all-time record for home runs in a season by a major league team. Are they going to hit 400 like you said? Uh, I don't think I said 400, but they're going to hit two between 250 and 300. I know you said 300. Yeah. It's, well, it's quite capable of it. It's going to happen. Just like the egg lady, right? Oh, I'll have to remember that. Read it. Bring that one in. What about the rest of I baseball? Okay, go ahead. No, I read in the paper that uh, Stanton, after 40 games last year, almost identical to this year, and he ended up with 59 round trippers. So uh, I don't know where Judge was last year. I know he got hot in, in uh, April, May. He had a pretty good right to the All-Star game. Slow down after, then pick it up at the end. But uh, I'm I'm thinking those two guys are going to be in around 50 home runs, uh, maybe more. Well, you know, uh, the Sox are hitting a lot of home runs too, and uh, you know they probably uh, they might not end up uh, as with as high a total as the Yankees, but uh, you know they'll be up there and uh, they'll be reasonably close. And, uh, and I also want to add, the, the best player on either of those teams is J.D. Martinez. Uh, he is a beast, and he's probably, you know, I mean, if this holds up, I mean, he's, he's going to be the MVP. He's hitting 340. Uh, he's just going to, he's like a triple crown threat. And, uh, you know, I'd rather have him, I'd rather have him than anybody on the Yankees. Well, uh, yeah, he'd be a fit anywhere, but he's he's suited for Boston. But he's hitting them out everywhere, so it doesn't really matter. He's got 50 yeah, he's, he's going to the office. Those two are the ones that are hitting. Yeah. Hey, you know the 19th... Well, there's a saying that you, know, you don't even really look at the standings until Memorial Day. And Memorial Day is right around the corner. Uh, but it's, you know, even as, as well as they're playing, you know, there's going to be some, some come down. I mean, they're both at, at uh, six. I think they're uh, both winning two out of every three games. Like this. Well, the Yankees. The six, six, six baseball. Yeah. The Yankees in the last 10 went seven to three and the Red Sox went six and four. But the talk about home runs, I think it was the 77 Red Sox that set the then record, what was it, like 246 home runs in a season. And then the 78 Yankees, which were supposed to, uh, I mean Red Sox, which were supposed to be the second coming of the, uh, the uh, 1927 Yankees, also hit a phenomenal amount of dingers. <laughs> and they, they wound up in second place both times. Home runs the, the not just win uh, ball games. The record. The record is held by Seattle Mariners. But that's twenty. That's twenty season. years later. We're talking about 1977-78. The Red Sox set, uh, set a record when George Scott came back that year. Oh, I. See. And then the oh, Brewers. I, see, yeah. the, I think the Brewers tied it in eighty, you know, like eighty-two, and they went to the World Series. But home runs yeah. don't don't get you all the way, you know. Look at, you're talking about the, where did Seattle go? They hit 264 dingers in 97. Who won the 1997 the World current, Series? Is that, is that the current record? Yes, 264. In 97? Yeah, that's, uh, the exp that was the, the steroids era. Ken Griffey was hit 56. The, was that the team that uh, won 115 games but lost in the, uh, the division series, or was that a, a different Mariners team? Uh, it was 116. What year did the Mariners win 116 games as the baseball? I believe it was 98. No, no. No, it wasn't. It was uh, 2000 or 2001. Uh, they were 90 and 72 in 97. 98. They were 76 and 85. Jeez, uh. Uh, yeah, 2001. Was, when they was, 2001. Were they still in the kingdom? Yeah. I can't imagine them hitting that many home runs in Safeco Field. That's a tough field. Yeah. 
Yeah. Gentlemen, I'm being I'm being paged. I've got to leave. So carry on and have fun. Right, we're going to trash the uh, Yankees now. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Baseball. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Poor, Bye. poor Mr. Baseball, you know. He was obsessing the other night while he was uh, in the Hashlinger quarterfinals about how Casey Stengel blew the 1957 World Series. That was one in seven games by uh, the Milwaukee Braves. You know, it's uh, it's always endlessly amusing to me that, you know, that Yankees fans, like, you know, endlessly suffer over the uh, the uh, handful of World Series they have lost more than they uh, gain any enjoyment out of the... Uh, out of the many they've won, it's, it's, you know, there's a lesson there. It's, uh, you know, it's, well, you, it's, know, you know, you know, you know, it, uh, the 57 World Series, it went seven games, you know, and Casey Stengel, he, uh, you know, he was a completely botched it. You know, what wins the planet, takes him to seventh game. Did the Braves won three in that series? Uh, Mr. Baseball is not here. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, okay. The Yankees came back to win in 58, but of course, that's no consolation, Peter. That's right, because they lost one. And, yes. You know, it's just like, it, it, the, the losses are like, you know, 10 times worse than the wins. That's if you're a Yankees fan, because uh, Satan holds your soul. Of the previous 10 World Series, the Yankees had been eight of them in one seven. Oh, that's right, Casey Stengel's. Lost the 55 uh, uh, World Series, too. What a bum, huh? And, and let's not mention 1960, which is the, uh, <laughs> the craw of all craws. I think Casey Stengel, they should take his memorial down at Yankee Stadium. You know, to hell with Robert E. Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah the, you know, the, the old professor, uh, you know, he definitely had his uh, uh, moments of ineptitude. But, uh, hey, listen, you know. Se uh, yeah, se it, seven World perfect. Series victories. Uh, all, the only other person is Joe McCarthy for two teams, the Cubs and the Yankees. He's a real bum. We ought to, it's too bad they couldn't have had the Popeye. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to mention his real name, uh, managing him all those years. Um, Dawn yeah. Zimmer, what a bum he was! Yeah, he like yeah he single handedly uh, you know managed the Sox on out of a couple of pennants. Jeez, oh, uh, but hey, listen, you know. But I think you know you mentioned that like uh, yeah those late seventies Sox teams you know those you know the, the curse of the Bambino my bus it was more like the curse of the uh, Roly Poly guy you know. Yeah. So, well, Peter, you got any uh, 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 brilliant insights into this season, baseball? Because Memorial Day is almost here. Why does the American League uh, East suck? But besides the our two teams, used to be that would be that was such a powerhouse division. Well, that was always like uh, you know the. You know, back in the four division day, right. the, the AL East was definitely, you know, the powerhouse division in, you know, all of baseball because, you know, you could always count on the the Orioles were always good. The Yankees yeah. and the Red Sox uh, were always good. And uh, the Tigers used to be in the AL East and they were always good. And, uh, well, yeah. they were so and more. It's kind of, it, it's, it's changed, uh, you know. Now you know you have the Red Sox and the Yankees who are uh, pulling their weight, but uh, you know the other teams. You know they they brought the Rays in, and uh, right now the Rays are the uh, are the best of the remaining three teams, which is like you know kind of hard to imagine. It's uh, it's 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 to see how the Orioles have fallen is fifteen and uh, thirty two, and the Blue Jays were supposed to. Uh have some good hitting and at least contend, and they're 22 and 25. Yeah. Did you see the Braves cut uh, Jose Batista, Joey Bats? No kidding. I didn't know that. I, yeah, yeah. It was just like, you know, they signed him to like a minor league deal, and they then they brought him up, and he, he was there for like 12 games, and he hit like a buck 40, and then they uh, released him again. 
And, uh, Jeez, yeah, and, and he probably he's made... One those, he's one of those guys that make you sort of scratch your head a little because he was a, you know, he was a serious power threat, you know? And I'll tell you what, uh, speaking of the Atlanta Braves, that's, uh, well, that's one of the more interesting... Uh, between them and the Phillies... Um, that's a, that's an interesting uh, story there. That they, you know, the, it looked like those teams they, and the Marlins obviously were you know tanking from the get go, but it looked like the Braves and the Phillies, who were going to be in the uh, Marlins neighborhood, have uh, gotten off to great starts, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty surprising. I'm just uh, looking at the National League right now. Yeah, the Braves and the Phillies are 600. Mets. Yeah, which is, uh, you know. What about I, them Marlins? Everybody sort of thought that they were uh, rebuilding. Uh, what about them like, Marlins? Cheap as creepers, you know. It's, um, well, they you know, spent it, it doesn't matter. I mean, even when, like, Jeffrey Loria owned that team, he was like, they were always, like, people were, like, PO'd at him constantly because he was always like cutting payroll and all of that you know but even with that it, it, it's hard to believe that team won two world series championships uh and uh, now it's like new ownership and it looks like you know the same deal it's just like uh, for whatever reason whoever owns that team just like doesn't want to pay anybody and uh you know, yeah but why were they what you're saying why was why, why was this team, uh, this group, headed by uh, you know who, number two of the Yankees, allowed to buy it, strip it, send uh, Stanton to New York, and now uh, I guess a radio, uh, a radio journalist, a radio talking head, is saying that they're denying him press credentials because he was writing about. Uh, I guess there's a lot going on with the Marlins that is not pretty. Well, yeah, I mean, it, and the thing is, you know, people asked uh, Rob Manfred that very question before the season, you know, it's just like, you know, how could, like, uh, you know, MLB allow this sale to go through, and, you know, the answer to that question is, like, MLB doesn't, like, talk to these prospective owners and ask them what their plans are for managing the team. You know, what they do is just, like, you know, uh, you know look at the checkbook and see if like you know the money's real and you know then they can do it with the team whatever they want uh, no but it's really not and, supposed to be that way Peter that's why uh, Bud Selig was always interfering and that's why he gave John Henry who was a Marlins owner the Red Sox because he wanted a good owner up here the, the, listen to this the double A affiliate of the Marlins outdrew the team in, in, on its opening day than Miami. They've been accused of tanking games, and then they just got rid of three, its three superstars. Uh, it, it's just unbelievable yeah. what's going on down there. Yeah, it's a sad tale, you know. But, you know, on the other hand, it's just like, you look at, like, the Houston Astros of, like, 2012, yeah. 2013. They have, you know, they stripped themselves, like, you know, down to the nubs and you know that was part of a plan and you know you can't argue with the results but you know they went like, they lost 110 games i think two years in a row and then a couple of years after that they weren't a whole lot better and then all of a sudden it's the astros uh you know whether or not jeter has something similar in mind i don't know it's hard to say but you know right now it, it certainly doesn't look good it cost $1.2 billion, that team. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I guess... Yeah, I'll tell you what, and uh, wait till you see what happens with these franchise values uh, now that, like, uh, sports betting is, uh, is legal all over the country, thanks to our friends in the Supreme Court. Um, it, it's... It's really going to open up a whole new era, in, I think, in all of sports, you know. Yeah, of, ta uh, of tanking you know, games it, it, openly. Just like the old days before Kennesaw Mountain Landis. They'll just manipulate the games. It'll be like wrestling. I already contend that uh, 
a lot of uh, baseball is wrestling. Oh, well, you know, man, I, you know, I, I think you're uh, you're overstating it. I think you're flat out wrong. Um, oh, come on, you know, slob I, ball. What's that? Well, the whole thing about the Marlins, you know, tanking uh, games. There's a lot of... Well, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's... You know, the same thing is going on in the NBA, even worse in the NBA, you know. It's just like, you know... I've never trusted... Just like, yeah. uh, just like uh, you know, it's... You know, there's a philosophy out there that the only way you're going to get ahead is, you know, you have to spend a few years in the basement. And, uh, and you know, it's... I don't know. I mean, does it work? You know, I guess in at least a couple of instances it has, but, you know, there's a difference between that and, like, you know, saying, calling it wrestling. Oh, well, we're talking about two different things. You know, buying a team and stripping it down to nothing, and then a new era the fo where gambling will become, uh, you know, what runs the sport. Well, I think it's going to, like... Well, we got to wrap uh, up. The, we're wrapping oh, okay. up on this paradigm and let it be told all over America the folks of Norton Massachusetts are accusing America's greatest pastime of being the equivalent of professional wrestling how does that sound Peter by putting words in wow. Norton's I, mouth I, Norton <laughs> you know I, I was never fond of Norton anyway oh, oh come on hey thank you so much Peter for coming here and making your usual provocative statements if, whether they're true or not. We talked about Gene Mansfield once. <laughs> okay, take care. Hope to see you all again when we uh, get a restraining order from MLB shutting us up. Bye.